Hi everyone, it's Freddy again. So it's time for market updates with Freddy, our CIO. Now, before we begin this time round, let me point you to some upcoming events that we have under Stash Away Academy. In Singapore, next Tuesday, we are going to have a seminar, What is your financial plan B? Now, it will be 7 p.m. Um, and in Malaysia, in the following Monday, on the 4th of March, we will have a, a basic seminar on what Investing 101. Now, just log in to Eventbrite Stash Away's page to find out more and register online. Great, so now, Freddy, um, today is Friday and we woke up to news that China banned Australia's coal. Wow, that's big news. So what do you think about it? Is it a retaliation for Huawei? What kind of impact it will have on Australia and Chinese economy? And how should we respond? Well, there's a lot going on in the trade space right now. And two days ago, we had this shocking news that surprised the market in Asian time, where the, the, the port called Dalian is a major import uh, ports of China that imports a lot of coal from Australia. Mm -hmm. They're going to have a unspecified, somewhat permanent ban mm -hmm. on Australian coal imports. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of conspiracy theory about that, about whether that's China's uh, signaling to the rest of the world, mm -hmm. non-US, that hey, don't you dare to mess with banning Huawei mm -hmm. and other Chinese companies. If you do that, we will ban your products too. Yeah. But it's also in the greater scheme of things, some traders are talking about Perhaps China now needs to import more resources from the U.S. itself. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is just one of the many steps that China is going to substitute uh, some of this demand mm -hmm. for U.S. product, but away from other countries. Plenty of rumors uh, flying around, and I just want to say mm -hmm. we have so much progress. Just a year later, just a day later, mm -hmm. uh, today and yesterday, we heard a lot about trade. Yeah. So. Um yeah, I think uh, Donald Trump has taken a slightly softer stance on Huawei, right? Uh, so that's kind of progress. And I think you're right, China, although they put a ban on Australian coal, they just impose some restrictions on the overall coal imports to China. So ban is only for Australia. Obviously, Canberra is trying to downplay uh, the impact of that because, you know, the Aussie has really taken a bit so many times, multiple times, uh, just in the first coming to two months of 2019. Mm -hmm. um, right, so we can understand why they're doing that. So, By the grand scheme of the trade uh, mm -hmm. war mm -hmm. situation. Um, yeah, so moving over to the bigger countries, um, mm -hmm. let's not talk about Australia, the US and China. What do you think? Will we come to a consensus by 1st of March? Uh, are we looking up or is there more downside risk? Well, I think firstly, the uh, the deadline is a soft deadline, apparently. Okay. Trump already says, sort of signaled that, hey, there's no issue, uh, mm -hmm. extending the deadline by 60 days. He said he may be doing it. Okay. And by into it, there's a lot of progress, right? He's actually meeting uh, Vice uh, Premier of China, Liu He, mm -hmm. uh, today, Friday. Mm -hmm. So lots of negotiations going on, and you've been seeing headlines on China and agricultural products from, mm -hmm. from US yesterday yeah. Yeah. and uh, they're going to meet today. So there's just so much progress and willingness to get some sort of face saving mm -hmm. yeah. deal by March 1st yeah. and that deadline is a soft one apparently. Although I really hope that they come to some consensus by 1st March because you know with Trump everything is so unpredictable and other 60 days need not necessarily be a good thing. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so mm -hmm. we should focus on mm -hmm. the action of getting to a resolution. Yeah. Uh, apparently, things are not insurmountable. Yeah. Uh, but mind you, this sort of short-term news are a lot of noise in the markets. Yeah. They, they, they are the source of volatility in the markets. Mm -hmm. And uh, the way investors should uh, position themselves is to have a to start with an investment plan. Mm -hmm. Right. You you stick to your plan. Stick to your risk level. Invest in a global diversified portfolio. Your investment decision are still based on the economic numbers. Yep. All of that doesn't change because of for precisely the same reason that all this trade war, yep. success, failure, flips and flops in the markets are very temporary. They are just noise and doesn't change the course for, for your portfolios. Mm -hmm. So we just need to keep that in mind as we talk about this short term yep. events in the markets. That's right. Um, so maybe we can move on a little bit to something uh, more fundamental, 
Um, in the US, we know that uh, the Federal Reserve re uh, released their meeting minutes and it seems like there is some concern about unemployment rate being near half a century low but inflation is not really catching up with their expectations and in fact, I think um, the market is expecting lower, in lower inflation than what the Fed is expecting. So what are the implications and how do you think that will pan out in terms of uh, upcoming Fed decisions? Well, it has been a very interesting conundrum at the Fed. While we have central banks still looking at very old, antiquated economic framework, mm -hmm. even measuring productivity is a very uh, questionable uh, metric. Mm -hmm. And so what central bank today has failed to account for are trends where people are just more productive with electronics and digital services. Mm -hmm. We produce more, we react to things faster. How do you capture that? And a lot of these things are kind of deflationary. It keep prices low. Mm -hmm. Better competition, better e-commerce platforms means that it's cheaper for, for people to shop online. Like and as such a way, we have uh, very cheap financial services. Yeah. So I would say that there's a lot of new trend in the new economy that the mm -hmm. Fed is still struggling to capture. Mm -hmm. Hence this uh, confusion that, hey, you know, mm -hmm. unemployment is so low, but hey, where's the wage rise? So uh, I think it's a conundrum in the traditional economic sense. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Fed is dealing with it by being more flexible. Okay, how so? Well, as you have uh, seen the news in the release of his January minutes, mm -hmm. the Fed has now uh, uh, a lot of members of the Federal Committee saying that they expect the, uh, the, the, the reduction of the balance sheet to end mm -hmm. in some time in 2019. Uh, just to step back, you know, during the financial crisis, uh, the Fed has bought a lot of assets to support the markets and uh, they are now in the process of unwinding those portfolios, right? those assets, right. and it's mm -hmm. about $54 billion a month of, uh, of asset sales. Mm -hmm. They're doing systematically. Yeah. But now the uh, the members are already saying that they expect that program to end sometime in 2019. Mm -hmm. I take that as a very f flexible and a very positive, very mm -hmm. pragmatic approach to managing mm -hmm. the economy. Okay, that's great. So, um, but they they also have another approach of managing, uh, you know, this uh, market interest rate. So apart from the purchases, they also do uh, manage the Fed funds rate, right? Yeah, the so interest rate. So they have hiked the interest yeah. rate a few times, the Fed funds rates a few times. Do you think we can continue to expect that for two thousand nineteen? Um, I was actually relieved that the Fed has uh, continued to say that the interest rate policy itself, rather than the asset policy. The interest rate side of things that they want to have the option to raise rate if the economy uh, continues to do really well mm -hmm. and overheated. I think that's a positive mm -hmm. because you do need to have that flexible policy too to, to make sure the economy does not get too uh, ahead of itself. Yeah. And also the flexibility can mean when the economy slows a little, you can slow your pace of rate hikes. Mm -hmm. Some market participants initially took it negatively, but as we see in the price action in the last few mm -hmm. days, Markets are still range trading. Mm -hmm. We haven't really broken out to any new trend or new directions. Right. So I take that as a, as a very positive development and for the US dollars. Right, coming to that. <laughs> so, uh, in fact, so in light of that, uh, we all know that uh, stash away's underlying investments are all denominated in the USD. And because most of our clients, we uh, you know, tra uh, deposit SGD to us. So clearly, the dollar sing currency pair is going to take an impact on the total investment returns. So what is your outlook for a dollar sing? Is it more likely to you know, well, appreciate, range bound? or? I think before we mm -hmm. tackle the question, uh, mm -hmm. it's good to step back for our user and say, mm -hmm. you, re you may realize that we have um, we trade and invest in US listed ETFs. And however, it's not 100% of assets are exposed to the US. We have about uh, a, a certain percent, about 40% right now. It changes over time. But um, the key thing is that we're trading in the US listed ETFs uh, for liquid, liquidity reason, for cost reason, for efficiency reasons, but it doesn't mean that we're 100% exposed to the US dollar. Of course, number I mean, one. we have underlines like European equities, Japan equities, exactly. Asia X Japan, and so on and so forth, right? So yes. we also have, um, you know, geographically neutral kind of assets like gold, right? Yes, so. and uh, just to add on to that, mm -hmm. uh, the, the by design, we mm -hmm. have uh, designed a certain amount of exposure to the US dollar and other state having currencies like Japan, mm -hmm. And, and even Europe. So these are all algorithmic, uh, algorithm driven mm -hmm. uh, from a risk management angle because uh, as we all knew in the past systemic crisis, mm -hmm. um, US dollar, Japanese yen, Swiss franc, 
they outperform every currency in the world. Yeah, so, so, yeah. so we kind of mm -hmm. build in the a lot of portfolio insurance for that. Mm -hmm. Now, to answer to your question, finally yeah. on dollar sing, mm -hmm. yes, there's some impact if the U.S. dollar move. However, uh, the news on putting the Fed perspective mm -hmm. into perspective, yeah. um, I'm very glad that the interest rate flexibility is there mm -hmm. because the U.S. Uh, economy is still the one that does best in the world right now, and. What it means is that the Fed is going to be on hold, or they're going to, or they're going to be hiking. Mm -hmm. The other side, the other country in the mm -hmm. currency pair, is unlikely to be more aggressive than the Fed. So that sort of kept the U.S. Uh, dollar pretty range bound. Okay. Okay. Right. We've taken back good. a lot of rate hikes, but mm -hmm. now it's not going away either. Mm -hmm. So that sort of makes for a much more stabler mm -hmm. U.S. dollar currency trading environment. Okay. I think that's very good for investors. That's great. So moving on from Australia to China to US and now maybe we can talk a bit more uh, about Europe. So Europe, I, if I'm not wrong, so there's some a little bit of a negative news coming out from Europe in terms of the purchasing managers in debt. So uh, it's down. So what do you say? Well, I think uh, you're right. Uh, we started yesterday with the European numbers. Uh, mm -hmm. The PMI is a more like a survey of mm -hmm. uh, business managers about their purchasing decisions, uh, hiring decisions, mm -hmm. and it's a metric about how business owners are thinking about capex. Mm -hmm. And now the trade war has certainly taken its toll on some of the PMI because uh, people are holding back their investing decisions mm -hmm. and trying to just wait for more clarity on trade. And where to source your, you know, where to source your cost base, right? It okay. does affect them. However, the indicator dropped uh, that we've seen yesterday. Mm -hmm. They are kind of uh, past news. They are lagging news because okay. it's been there for a while. Okay. Everybody already talked about a trade war for so long. Mm -hmm. We expected that to happen. The market is a forward-looking pricing engine. Mm -hmm. So. Which is why we haven't seen a really big dramatic movement in the market, even though the numbers were were, were somewhat so soft. So you say that it's already priced into the market, and we shouldn't be too concerned about it. Yeah, um, unless okay. you are you are a short term active trader, then mm. I'm sorry about mm. the kind of reaction you you have uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. But for us, the uh, medium and long term investors, it, it didn't matter a blip. Um, it's just a bit of a market went softer in the open, mm -hmm. later in the day market came back, so it, it didn't really change anything because it's already been priced in by the, by, by the, by the news flow. Cool. Yeah. So uh, lastly, there's also really a lot of talk about how the market has rebounded substantially from uh, December last year and that you know we might be at tipping point. It's good time to take some profit. Um, and in fact, some of our clients who have, you know, unfortunately ended a high in Octo uh, in around August last year, and they're finally seeing, you know, their portfolios breaking even, making positive returns. They say, "Hey, it's time to take profit." What have you got to say about those? Well, I mean, uh, in principle, that's a really bad thing to do because um, you got a separate lump sum investment or the trading investment from a trading mentality from investing. Because uh, this is about investing a saving, creating a long-term plan, and contributing regularly. When markets are down, your fixed contribution gives you more number of units in the portfolio, mm -hmm. right? And when I'm, actually, when the markets are up, you get less, but you should average into the market. The averaging reduces and smooths out the noise to your portfolio. It smooths out the volatility, the swings to your net worth. That's why you have a plan that average into the market. We call that DCA, mm -hmm. dollar cost averaging, mm -hmm. right? It's the single best thing that retail investors can do to, uh, to reduce volatility in the portfolio mm -hmm. and build it up for long-term success. Now, by suffering through a drawdown in Q4 mm -hmm. and now making some money and taking it out, it's a trading mentality. And a lot of times I've seen in the past with a lot of users and even uh, in my previous role in the industry, I've seen people struggling to get back to the market if the market did not come down again. In fact, that's exactly what happens in March 2009. Mm -hmm. After the crisis in 2008, yeah. um, well, the market has been on a 10-year bull run since then. Mm -hmm. When you take profit too early and then the market make new high, yeah. how are you going to get back in? Psychologically, it's really difficult for the investors to ever enter the market again and hence mm -hmm. be cut off from the long-term upside. 
Yeah, so I guess there's really an opportunity cost when you're thinking about profit taking, then the question is what else are you going to put it into, right? And I think um, you did mention before in some of our seminars, again, uh, the the, co the opportunity cost if you miss out on just the, the top mm -hmm. uh, few, um, you know, uh, performing days in, right. a, in a year. Do you still have that? Yeah, that? that's yeah. actually a yeah. study from J.D. Yeah. Morgan Asset yeah. Management. And it actually say that if, just imagine if a portfolio mm -hmm. is just one thing, the asset. P500 and in the last 25 years if you invest in it passively and you went through the ups and downs of markets you did not market time your average return in the last 25 years is around 9.8% per annum per annum yeah okay that's really quite good <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, however if somebody tries to time the markets and miss out on just the 10 best days in that 25 year period uh -huh. your return goes down from the 9 plus percent mm -hmm to 6.3. Wow, that's a lot. You lose I mean, a just, third. Just 10 days in 25 years? Okay. Yeah. Yep. And if you miss another 10 days, mm -hmm. it goes down to 3.3. Wow. Okay. So the cost of getting market timing wrong is, is, is really huge. And we would continue to suggest that mm -hmm. you do not time the markets. Now, and also in addition, it's not just one asset in your portfolio with Stash mm -hmm. Away. We are a multi-asset, highly diversified, very global portfolio sort of mm -hmm. platform. You don't even have to worry about just one market going up or down. Mm -hmm. So the more so you should average in, have an investment plan, and invest the savings uh, regularly. Mm -hmm. That is the best way for you to succeed in the long term. Great. Okay. Thank you, Freddie. Uh, it's been most insightful with you again. Uh, so thanks everyone for watching. If you have any questions pertaining to what was discussed today, please write it in the comments and we'll try to address it in the next episode. Now remember to check out our Events Bright page uh, for upcoming seminars in both Singapore and in Malaysia. Thank you. Happy Friday.